Hi, it's The Wire. It's Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Let's continue to talk about the heavyweight division. Let's also talk about Luis Ortiz's fight against Charles Martin. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, um, I see this morning, there were a couple of interesting articles on BoxingScene.com, right? The staff at BoxingScene.com, an excellent site, is hot and bothered over 22-year-old heavyweight Jared Anderson. Jared Anderson is managed by James Prince. It's the same group behind Shakur Stevenson. Jared Anderson has looked good in some fights. Now, I'm just talking for myself. This is a unique time in the heavyweight division. I don't believe Jared Anderson is ready. I believe that the elites are either extremely skilled, right? Tyson Fury, who I believe beats Alexander Usyk if the two fight. I'm leaning Fury. Usyk, not just the Olympic gold medalist, not just a cruiserweight champion, but undisputed at cruiser and now has a share of the heavyweight belt. Right? Some of the other guys who I feel are closer to a title than Jared Anderson include Dylan White. Right? Dylan White's a hellacious body puncher, folks. And, of course, he has a great jab. He had to throw some ring coverage shots to beat Alexander Povetkin, but understand in the pocket, Dylan White is a handful, right? Joseph Parker. You know, Derek Chisora is a guy who's hard to take out of there. How do you deal with a guy leaning over the pocket? Parker did so with uppercuts. But understand, Parker is a guy with offensive skills that translate from distance. He fought Anthony Joshua. He went the distance with Anthony Joshua in a fight where the referee wouldn't even allow him to be inside. Right? This is not the 1980s in Mike Tyson with an aging Larry Holmes who had already lost to Michael Spinks. Right? This is a different time entirely. Let's remember, too, that while we're looking at Usyk in this era, and we're saying, oh, wow, he's up from Cruiser. Understand, in the 1980s, Michael Spinks, who had a share of the heavyweight title, who Tyson beat in the unification match, was coming up from light heavyweight, not Cruiser. Right? I've looked at films of Jared Anderson. I believe Philip Ergovic is closer to the heavyweight title than Jared Anderson. This is not to say that Anderson isn't going to develop into an interesting heavyweight. But I need for people to understand what's happening at heavyweight right now. You have a clash of very different styles. Deontay Wilder's style is very different than Tyson Fury's and Usyk's style. You have a few guys who've had a share of the heavyweight title, right? Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury now, Alexander Usyk. You know, if I were guiding Jared Anderson, the person I would target would be Trevor Bryan. Not the other guys. And Trevor Bryan, by the way, has a lot of skills. Right? Understand, too, I've looked at Jared Anderson's style. It's interesting. Even though he's in his early 20s, even though he's high volume, he does not have the hand speed of another former champion, Andy Ruiz. And if anyone is tracking these pictures out of the Ruiz training camp, Andy has never looked more in shape. Keep in mind, too, you have guys who are right there on the verge. Joe Joyce, right, should have won the Olympic gold medal won the match in a tainted Olympic Games, where now we know there was a judging scandal. In my opinion, he wins the match, they job him, 
he wins the silver, right? Just like Roy Jones, another guy who got jobbed in an Olympics. And, of course, you have Daniel Dubois, right? Dubois is not center stage right now simply because we're dealing with Anthony Joshua, right? Another former champ, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. So the heavyweight division is deep. Right? I don't think there's any guy in his early 20s who can burn through the heavyweight division like Mike Tyson did. I feel Tyson really was a one-off. Right, The young guy who comes and he's fighting legends, right? Michael Spinks, Olympic gold medalist. Larry Holmes, I keep saying this, he's one of the dominant heavyweight champions of our time. Right, Tyson comes in, Bone Crusher Smith. Um, Tyson comes in and is able to blow through the heavyweight division. Folks, you're not going to see that again for quite some time. It looked like it was trending that way, didn't it, with Anthony Joshua. Inexplicably, Joshua and Tyson, Tyson excuse me, Deontay Wilder never entered the ring together. Right, to me, that's inexplicable. I'll leave it for you in the comment section to blame whoever you want for that, right? But Anthony Joshua looked like he was blowing through the heavyweight division, took a detour, right? Was scheduled to fight Jarrell Miller, right? Still not Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. Was scheduled to fight Jarrell Miller on American soil. If you're going to cross the Atlantic, shouldn't you be doing so for Deontay Wilder, Right? Miller, of course, fails PED tests, has barely been heard from since, so he pivots to Andy Ruiz. And then, of course, in that fight, you understood Joshua didn't have the blinding hand speed of an Andy Ruiz. Joshua, cautious fighter, right, couldn't handle the pocket like Andy Ruiz, even after knocking down Andy Ruiz. And Joshua, who was unbeaten, just like Tyson, he's like Tyson here, unbeaten, infallible, always alpha, when suddenly he faced adversity. Just like Tyson against Buster Douglas, didn't know how to hold, couldn't avoid Buster Douglas's jab, walks into an uppercut, right? We saw that Anthony Joshua's survival skills were not the best. So, from this seat, in terms of guys who have a legitimate shot at the heavyweight title, folks, there are a few, right? As I said, Joseph Parker, uh, Ergovic, uh, Dylan White, right? Don't get me wrong. I would take Tyson Fury over. Dylan White, for example, right? But... You know, I could see a scenario where Tyson Fury tries to come inside and actually finds that Dylan White has inside skills, right? A young guy like Jared Anderson, enjoy the highlights. Folks, he's not ready. Let me mention another guy, Frank Sanchez, who seems to think that he can beat Usyk, right? Who right now is unbeaten? Who, like Luis Ortiz, comes from Cuba? a country with one of the world's richest boxing traditions, right? This, is, this division is too deep. This is no division for young men right now. Let's give Jared Anderson a few years. Heavyweights age more slowly, right? A Floyd Patterson, a Tyson, an Ali, these early 20 guys who suddenly emerge as heavyweight champs, they're few and far between especially in this era. Talking about Luis Ortiz against Charles Martin, right? Another former champion who has some skills. I thought Ortiz looked good, but I did see where Ortiz is starting to feel his age. I'm not too phased by the first knockdown, which I thought was arguably an illegal punch. Right? It was kind of a fluke thing. Ortiz is crouched down. Martin comes in and hits him at an odd angle. Right? 
okay, fine. I'll give Ortiz a pass on that. Ortiz didn't look too staggered by that. The second knockdown's troublesome. One of the reasons why Charles Martin is avoided is because of his jab, which is stiff. Let's also realize, too, that both of these guys were southpaws. By the way, that's another reason young guys are going to have a hard time, right? Because you're dealing with skills both right and left, right now at heavyweight, right? Understand, a guy like Ortiz in the moment may have thought he was fighting a right-hander, right? He walks right into a sledgehammer jab from Charles Martin that he did not have blocked, was completely unprepared for, right? I'm not sure that happens against a righty. But let's just say Ortiz goes down hard the second time. Now that concerned me. Ortiz's legs concerned me the most, right? I know he wins by stoppage. He certainly showed power, but understand, power is the last to go. The first things to go are coordination. Aging is a tough thing. To me, for different rounds in this fight, Luis Ortiz looked unsteady on his legs. Rather than his legs, and he's highly skilled, understand he's doing things like he's, you know, bending at the knees at times, suddenly, just to throw off the timing of Charles Martin, right? Ortiz always seems to have something in the way of shots, right? A shoulder, a hand. You know, he's a guy relying on technique, not reflexes. But he did look a little unstable in the fight. There is an urgency, given his age, right? Heavyweights age more slowly, but Ortiz is now a few years past 40. I think Ortiz is a tough out, in part because he's a slick southpaw in part because some of the guys at heavyweight are still developing their skills, right? You know, Deontay Wilder's doing some things differently these days, and I'm impressed. I know Deontay Wilder, and let's give his resume some credit here, has stopped Luis Ortiz, who's still a force at heavyweight, multiple times, right? Wilder's the only guy to beat Ortiz. Right? And, of course, let's remember Wilder is the only guy to knock down Tyson Fury multiple times in multiple fights. Right, But I consider Deontay Wilder to be vulnerable. He has the sport's best punch. Right, That straight right hand I would put up against any punch any other boxer has in the sport. If you want to talk about other great punches, Canelo's left hook conceded, right? Go ahead and do so in the comment section of this video, right? But let's just say Wilder's straight right hand is as good as anything, punch-wise, in boxing, right? But I believe Wilder is a guy who's still learning things. I believe Anthony Joshua is a guy who's still learning things, Right? I think a Luis Ortiz would give Joshua all he could handle. I'd love to see Ortiz against Usyk. Understand, Usyk himself is in his mid-30s. Right? That would be a chess match. I would make the argument that Ortiz has the bigger punch. Right? As for Charles Martin, people are going to avoid it. He's a southpaw who hits hard, right? I understand Konotsky beat him, right? Okay, fine, but that was a tough fight. Understand, Martin wanted this fight to continue, even goes over to Ortiz's corner and starts a ruckus after the fight. 
But you need to understand that Charles Martin, who does look cartoonish in some interviews at times, talking about how he walks around like a god and all this other stuff, has a serious corner. I believe Manny Robles was in the corner for Andy Ruiz for some of Ruiz's biggest fights. Manny Robles is the guy who's in the corner right now for Charles Martin. Right? I believe people around boxing understand that Martin has a very stiff jab. He has a very good straight left hand. He's a southpaw. Right? And he hits with power. He might fight a little bit upright, but you've got to be a technician like Luis Ortiz to know how to get inside and rough him up. Or you've got to set some murderous pace, right, to tire him out. So let me just say, here's how I see the lay of the land in heavyweight. Here's how I'm going to bet it, right? I do like Usyk in the rematch against Anthony Joshua. I believe Joshua is a gifted puncher. I believe Joshua could come out and try to start fast on Usyk. My concern is that Usyk's already been there with Derek Chisora, right? Chisora started fast. Chisora doesn't hit as hard as Anthony Joshua, but Chisora does other things that Joshua doesn't do. Chisora's a shorter fighter who knows how to get low, right? I believe Usyk took that fight against Chisora for style purposes in preparation for getting bum-rushed by Anthony Joshua early in their match. But Joshua, of course, is cautious. He didn't bum-rush Usyk. Joshua sees himself as a technician, right? Joshua, of course, then tries to box with Usyk instead because he's cautious. Now, as I've said in other videos... Changing your pace, changing the speed at which you drive, just think about that, is very difficult, right? If there's a member of your family who drives 55, good luck getting that person to drive 75 and feel comfortable in a very stressful condition, right? When you're dealing with a high-pressure situation, and, of course, a skilled professional on the other side of the competition. What I've found is that the person who drives 55, maybe you can convince them to drive 75 for a couple of blocks. But then after that, they're going to revert to driving 55. Ironically, and I know people think I'm crazy, the fight Joshua needs to fight in the rematch against Usyk is the fight George Foreman fought. He lost it. But it was actually a very good game plan. It's the fight George Foreman fought against Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. You come out blazing. Right? You're the bigger man. In the Foreman-Ali fight, Ali was over 30. This was in the 70s. We thought Ali was done in the sport, right? He'd been the champion nine years earlier, right? Foreman comes out, two-handed attack, hyper-aggressive, forces Ali over to the ropes. That's the game plan Anthony Joshua needs to employ, right? The only difference is when he gets Usyk over by the ropes, he needs to pace himself better than George Foreman did. Right? Be aggressive, but don't punch yourself out. If you're too aggressive in a round and you feel like you're punching yourself out, back away. Right? Just go to the middle of the ring. You're the one pushing the action to begin with. Back away and like Canelo in some fights, the El Perro fight, Take minutes of rounds off or portions of rounds off, right? Say to yourself, I'm going to take the next 30 seconds off. But you need to show Usyk that you're the bigger man in the ring. Also, with Joshua's punching power, he only has to be right once. 
in a rematch if Joshua comes out, have some feints before throwing certain punches. In other words, come out, look like you're going to throw an overhand right then. Oh, here's the uppercut. If he lands anything flush on Usyk, and Usyk looks badly hurt, dazed, confused, or goes down, the crowd's going to go crazy. The theme of the first part of the fight is going to be AJ is back. I suspect what's going to happen is going to be what happened in the Usyk Chizora fight. Chizora comes out, both guns blazing, backs up Usyk. What AJ people need to do is review that tape. You'll realize that as Usyk is backed up, his back's touching the ropes. He still has his defense, doesn't he? The body parts are tucked, aren't they? Usyk is ready to survive the round, isn't he? Not a lot to hit. Right? Derek Chisora got tired in the middle of that fight. And Derek Chisora is a guy who drives 75. AJ drives 55. If he drives 75 the first couple of rounds against Usyk, he's going to be tired. The most devastating round of the first AJ Usyk fight is the last round. Usyk gets inside and is cuffing AJ around. Right? He looks like Andy Ruiz did against AJ in the third round. Right? Let's just say I believe Usyk, who has faster feet than Andy Ruiz, understood that there was a way to get inside, inside of AJ's reach and cuff him around. So, I like Usyk over AJ in the rematch. I like, and it's a dangerous fight, I like Fury over Dylan White. The reason it's dangerous is because they fought together. The reason it's dangerous is because Dylan White looked damn good in the rematch against Alexander Povetkin. Right? I just think that that's a fight that Fury, because of reach, because of timing, can win on his back foot. Then, when Fury fights Usyk, right, let's hope this happens, because you and I know this is boxing, <laughs> right? You know, you sit around and you say, well, obviously, AJ and Wilder are going to fight. Then it never happens. And they were on top, folks, for a long time, right? Let's hope we get Fury Usyk. If we do, the mistake Tyson Fury has been making against smaller, more coordinated opponents is that he tries to fight them on his back foot, right? It's actually similar, by the way, to the mistake that AJ made against Usyk. Right? Fury is too outside. He's giving away his size. I don't believe he does that against Usyk because I believe he's had a learning curve. He now understands that when he's fighting smaller, more coordinated guys, he needs to bring the fight to them. There are very few at heavyweight who can throw their weight around like Tyson Fury can. As I've said here a few times, Tyson Fury to me is a historical heavyweight. He's one of the best of the last 30 years, right? His peers are Lennox Lewis. Let's remember Lennox was great, folks, right? It's Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko, who right now, of course, is in the Ukraine, part of their government, uh, he's involved in his own dust-up with Vladimir Putin. Right? Well, let me just say this. I believe Tyson Fury against Usyk 
is going to try to come forward and beat Usyk on the inside like he did Derek Chisora. Let's remember, both Usyk and Tyson Fury fought and beat Derek Chisora. Tyson Fury did so more comfortably. Also, if Tyson Fury gets tired, Tyson Fury then has the back foot game to back away, use length, pump a jab as he takes a breather. Right? George Foreman had the great jab. Right? Foreman had one of the best jabs I've seen. But Foreman didn't have the back foot and the legs to just take a step back and trust the jab. Right? Foreman's jab was a predatory jab. He came forward bludgeoning you with the jab like Sonny Liston. Right? Tyson Fury and recognized the skill level. Tyson Fury has a back foot. Fury has what I call a mobile jab. And Fury, who's better than we think, is ambidextrous. Like Luis Ortiz, the concern with Fury is age, right? He's in his mid-30s. Even guys with great legs and mobile jabs start to slow down, right? One of the first things that age takes away from you are the great legs. The last few fights we've seen Fury in, he's been coming forward, hasn't he? Right? The Otto Wallen fight. The last two Deontay Wilder fights. Right? One wonders, at least I wonder, whether the Fury with the legs against Vladimir Klitschko still has that level of mobility. Anyway, that's how I see the heavyweight division. Jared Anderson, your day will come. But right now, it's not here. Let me just say, too, Luis Ortiz made a wise decision deciding not to fight Ergovic. Right? When you're in your 40s, you have to pick your spots. You can't throw away a limited opportunity against one of the toughest young Lions out there, knowing that a loss could tumble you down the heavyweight pecking order, as Charles Martin has just discovered. Right? Ortiz wants to fight someone who's not going to play distance games. Ergovic is too tall, fights tall doesn't have to enter the pocket to hurt you and throws punches with a loop. As we saw in the Nakatani fight against Teofimo Lopez, Nakatani, tall guy, throws punches with a loop, doesn't quite have Ergovic's mobility, but the loop is going to throw off a technician like a Luis Ortiz. Right? If I'm Ortiz, I wait for a fight against a Dylan White, an Otto Wallen. Right? Wallen, by the way, one of the better athletes in the heavyweight division. Right? If I'm Ortiz, I stay away from Joseph Parker because that uppercut can shake things up in the pocket. Right? I wait for the right fight. I take my time, even at my age. Because I believe Ortiz is the kind of talent who can catch a guy on the right night. He would have a shot against an Anthony Joshua. But I need for people to understand. Older people have less patience. Right? Said the man in his 50s. Older people have less patience. If you're betting on a Luis Ortiz fight, just understand that Ortiz is going for stoppages. Right? The prop that the fight doesn't go the distance is one you need to seriously consider. Given Luis Ortiz's declining punch resistance, we'll call it, the fact that he himself wants to go home early. Right? 12 rounds is a lot to ask from someone in their 40s. 
and given that the guys he's targeting would be sluggers who have holes in their game. In other words, Charles Martin was this close to beating Luis Ortiz, right? I'm guessing Luis Ortiz would rather face an AJ than an Ergovic, than a Joseph Parker, than an Usyk. Well, if he gets a shot at Usyk, obviously Usyk has a share of the title. Uh, a guy's going to take that shot. But style-wise, let's just say Usyk wouldn't be Ortiz's first choice. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. This video, of course, has a lot of speculation. I'm just giving you my opinion. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.